guys about what we did last week. Um, it, it was quite an experience. Jenny and I were in Dallas this past weekend. Um, they're actually rolling out this new lineup of training for anytime someone becomes a jewel um, in the first quarter that you're a jewel, you have the option to go. Well, they want you to go. I don't know exactly how they're going to word it. So don't take me, don't take me exactly how I'm saying this. You're going to be either have the option or be required to go to this amazing jewel training. And it really was great. The material was super. I kind of was overwhelmed by how many notes I needed to take and I don't like to take notes. So I kept thinking I need to be taking notes, but I wanted to listen really bad. And, um, anyway, they had me do two of the training breakout sessions or whatever, not a breakout session, but, a uh, two of the topics basically. Um, and they had, uh, Sonia Dudley and Helen McFadden do two, two of other topics each. And, that was only for our group of jewels. They had other jewels doing, um, they'd broken it into four sessions basically. So they had maybe a total of like 15 trainers or something like that. But the reason I'm telling you about this is because I wanted you guys to know that while well, I learned several things, one of which was that I can be incredibly more nervous than I thought. Um, it's one thing to train your team. It's an entirely different thing to train jewels. Um, in a way I cannot even describe to you. Um, I was so proud of myself after it was over, not because it went well, because I have no idea. It's like my ears rang the whole time I was up there. I mean, I could literally hear like a piercing weird, like ringing vibration noise in my ears. The entire time I spoke, I was sweating all the way down, like from my armpits all the way down to the top of my pants. I could feel sweat. I was sticking to myself. Um, the reason I was proud of myself is just because I did it. Like I didn't realize I was going to be as nervous as I was, but I did know leading up to it, how nervous I felt. And the reason I'm sharing that with you guys is because this, this thing we do reaching out to people, um, and telling them, Hey, guess what? I'm, I got involved in a scheme. Do you want to get involved in it too? I mean, it's a scary thing that we do because people, that's our perception of how we think people perceive us or that they may perceive us. And so I wanted to go over a few things to you guys tonight that um, not even from the training, it's just some stuff I came across after our training. And I wanted to tell you one thing I learned at the training though, that someone said, I don't even remember who it was, but when they said it, it was just like can opener. I mean, <laughs> Here's what it was. They said when their when their downline calls them with something discouraging, and they say something to them along the lines of that they they tell them what their problem is. I'm having this issue, and they they spell it out. It's X Y Z. They said, well, then when I come back with a response to them that sounds positive, sometimes sometimes my downline will say to me, I'm still quoting here. Sometimes my downline will say to me, well, that's easy for you to say because you're a jewel. It's easy for you to look at that that way because you've already succeeded. And I thought, oh God, how many times have I either one heard that from someone or perceived that even if they weren't brave enough to say it to me, they're like, well, she's awfully nice. So I'm not going to just come out and say something that rude, but I have perceived that from people lots of times. And what, the training topic or what they were really talking about was the fact that their response to that is no, it's not easy for me because I'm a jewel and it, it's it not easy for me to feel that way because I'm a jewel. That's backwards. I am a jewel because I feel that way. And I just sat there. I was like, Oh my God, like totally rocked my world because that is the truth, but I had never thought of it in to, to just be, first of all, to be that blunt about it. And second of all, I've never thought to say that to someone because I do get a, the occasional, well, you know, that must be easy for you because you're already a jewel. And I was like, no, the reason I'm a jewel is because I look on the bright side. 
I think of things positively. I always look for the upside of things. And I'm not talking about my, just myself, because obviously this wasn't even my topic, but it's true in all situations when you're dealing with leaders, which is what we did this last weekend, the entire weekend was full of just inspiration, people sharing their hearts. Um, I was amazed by that actually, how much people were willing to share their heart. And anyway, so tonight, what I wanna go over with you guys, I knew I wouldn't get through here without saying so tonight. That's how I usually start, but I didn't start us tonight. I'm trying to shake things up a little bit. A little bad karaoke, and then I'll, you know, give you a story, and then I'll say so tonight. So what I want to do is share screen with you. Give me a second. Before I share screen, I need to say this while I can still see all your faces. I hate sharing screen because then I can't see your faces. But um, this will take a few minutes, what I'm about to read through with you. Don't feel panicked. You can, if you like to write notes, you can write the notes. If you don't like to write notes, I'm going to send you um, the entire, what I'm reading from, you'll have that. So if, if it helps you to write notes so you can remember something better, that's fine. But don't feel panicked like I do. And here we go. Okay. Okay, hang with me here while I read this. So how do you find the courage to jump through your fears? It starts with awareness of what's holding you back. My awareness sharpened when I realized the results of a very interesting poll. A leader with a large direct selling organization sent her team a questionnaire asking them to identify the fears that were holding them back. I want to share the top 10 fears with you with the caveat that yes, this is data from just one downline. And yet I believe that the results from other organizations and companies would be very similar. The top 10 were the fears of one being pushy two, rejected three judged fears of being a leader. Maybe someone is afraid of being a leader. Fears of being a failure. Fear of being incompetent. Unsuccessful. Compared to other leaders. A disappointment to my family. Or unequal to the task. So how did you feel as you read through this list? Which fears are holding you back or slowing you down? So I want you to think back to some past situations where your fears manifested as hurt, resistance, sadness, shame, or some other painful emotion. Did I ever start recording earlier? I did, okay. Does it show that we are recording? It does, okay, good. <clears throat> now I gotta find my place, okay. When you come to the realization that the root of these painful feelings is fear, you can transform your feelings and purposefully move through the fear. I know for me, when I recognize and accept my fears, I'm able to make the choice to move forward anyway. To effectively, effectively move in the direction of your dreams, your mindset is critical. It's your time to make a choice to move through fear and into action. And there's a quote here, it says, if you wanna catch your dreams, you have to drop your fears. Very visual, I'm a visual person. If you wanna catch something, you can't have something already in your hand. So make a choice to catch your dreams. It's your, it's your time to drop your fears and move into action. When you feel yourself starting to turn away from your best intentions, to succumb to distractions, to say maybe later to the business building activities you planned, that's when you need to read the greatest pep talk ever. Bravely consider these inspiring words from one of my favorite authors. This is one of my favorite quotes by the time. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? Marianne Williamson. 
Exactly. Who are you not to be? If you're open and willing to move out of fear and into action, try this exercise that I'm confident will renew your mindset of confidence and deserve. And so to give yourself the greatest pep talk ever, simply fill in the blanks. The blanks are short here for easy reading, but when you're ready to actually fill them in for yourself, see page 52. So when I give you this, um, it's an entire, it's like a book. It's a pamphlet book, something you could print out if you want to. Right here, it makes it easy to read, but you can actually go all the way to the bottom and print out page 52, and it makes it more like a workbook where you can fill in the blanks. So here, confront your fear, step one. If I were truly brave, I would, what is the one thing you really want to do? But I've been telling myself I can't because, and then you would fill in the blanks that she gives you. She gives you like four or five lines where you would list all the reasons you've put off getting started. Really though, the worst thing that could happen is, and then you fill in the blanks with how bad it could be. How bad could it be? My bravest friend, so-and-so, will say, and what sage advice would she or he give? Now, I can tell you this. My bravest friend. I will say this. My best friend, as in my husband, will always tell me, why would you worry about that? Why, why would you question yourself? Everything that you try to do, you're successful at if you really set your mind to it. You know, he always bolsters me up, okay? But I'm afraid other people like so-and-so, who are the negative people in your life, will say, what's the worst they could come up with? If that happens, I'll respond by, and it says, you'll feel more confident if you have a plan. Step number two, call for reinforcements. Asking for help doesn't make me look weak. When things get hard, I'll call your biggest fan. Who's your biggest supporter? For backup, because, and then you put the answer to that. How will this person help you reach your goal? And I'll call another backup. How will this person help you reach your goal? Having people on my team will make me feel stronger, more confident, safer. Step number three, dare yourself to get started. If I want to begin blank, what's your goal again? Right this minute, I can plan of action. First thing that you would do, what's your first move? Then over the next few months, I can blank and blank and blank. So you're, give, you're gonna do something that's like a plan of action. That's the first thing that you need to do. Call, email, text, whatever. Over the next few months, I can follow up. I can't go be really great examples in a minute, but I'm just kind of get your head in the right place. Even if blank happens. So can you predict some potential pitfall? I won't get upset because blank. And then you just be your own cheerleader. And so it is. Is this great or what? And the best part is you can use this script. She says forever. And I say, you can use this script for every stinking fear everything that crops up it you, you know you go back to that list of 10 every or whatever your list of 10 is everybody's going to be a little bit different and you go back and you use this script for every single incident you can give yourself the greatest pep talk ever today and anytime you feel fear shame frustration, disappointment, or resistance getting in your way and keeping you from taking action. Um, and then she talks about in upcoming chapters, we'll review real life examples on how this script can help you overcome those top 10 paralyzing fears that, that we reviewed in chapter one. So consider these inspiring words from Emerson. What lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. Ralph Waldo, Waldo Emerson. What lies within each of us is the courage to change, to grow, and to move confidently in the direction of our dreams. And that is my wish for all of us. I'm not going to continue. I'm going to read just a little bit more. I don't want you guys thinking, oh my gosh, you're going to read the whole book. Um, 
now that you've been introduced to the top 10 fears and the greatest pep talk ever, it just makes sense to tie the two together to illustrate how easily you can take a fear, plug it into the greatest pep talk ever, and voila, you have the script to go from being stuck to taking action. I loved how she wrote, I mean, when I read this today, I was like, yes. I'll say it again, yes, okay? The first fear on our hit parade was being pushy or sounding salesy. Whenever I hear someone say, I don't wanna be pushy or I don't wanna be that person, I remind them that they aren't that person in any other area of their life, so why would they be that way now? If you approach people with your authentic enthusiasm and focus on their needs, okay, those two things are, I mean, like, I don't have a highlighter. If I did, I'd have to highlight it on my screen. But if you approach people with your authentic enthusiasm, and we have everything to be enthusiastic with what we do, we don't have to fake it until we make it. We don't have to pretend like our products work in order to get people to sign up authentic enthusiasm and focus on their needs. Oh my gosh. I don't know how many talks that I listened to this last weekend that the, one of the main focuses of the talk was focusing on other people's needs. What do they need? If you can fix their need, that's how you're going to grow in this business. Whether it's a customer, whether it's a team and what a teammate and what their goal is, it's all about them. It says Jim Rohn always said that to succeed in sales, Simply talk to lots of people every day. And here's what's exciting. There are lots of people. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. <laughs> so, so let's see how you can use the greatest pep talk ever to overcome this fear and move into action. Step one, confront your fear. If I were truly brave, I would talk to the top three people on my chicken list. So she's filling in the blank blanks here for you. She's not saying that this is yours. She's just giving you an example. If I were truly brave, I would talk to the top three people on my chicken list. But I've been telling myself I can't because I'm chicken. Just kidding. Because I simply can't stand the idea of being pushy or inauthentic to my friends. I don't want to be that person who is always in their face trying to sell them something. Really, though, this is still off that worksheet. The worst thing that could happen is that they will listen politely and show no interest or listen politely and tell me I'm crazy. My bravest friend so-and-so will say, I can see your enthusiasm for this business and I know that you're scared, but I also know that you can do this. Sharing your enthusiasm is not being pushy. It's simply sharing something you're passionate about. It's inspiring, really. I'll be your first customer. But I'm afraid other people like, I have mean names for these people, but so-and-so, I'll stick with so-and-so again, will say, stop being so pushy. Why are you trying to sell me something? What makes you think that you can build a business? Why don't you just forget it and stay stuck, miserable, and pathetic like me? <laughs> If that happens, I'll respond by remembering sage advice from Leslie. The disinterest of any one person cannot impact my success unless I let it. Call for reinforcements. Asking for help doesn't make me look weak. When things get hard, I will call my sponsor or upline leader and ask her to reach out to the top 10 people on my list via three-way calling. We'll reach out together so she can teach me how to share my business authentically. And I'll call my three best friends and ask for their support and for referrals. Having people on my team will make me feel more confident and enthusiastic. I know I am not alone. What did they tell me? I'm in business for myself, but not by myself. And I really like that. Step three, dare to get your, dare yourself to get started. If you, uh, if I want to talk, Sorry, if I want to begin talking to new people right this minute, I can do a three-way call with my sponsor today. Then over the next 30 days, I will reach out to new people every day, learn my company's system, depend on my sponsor for support and for setting goals, and find the discipline to keep enthusiastically talking to new people regardless of their response. Even if the people I talk to have no interest, it is not a reflection of my being pushy. 
They simply don't have any interest at this time. Learning that, li learning that lesson has liberated me. I won't get upset because I know I can do this. I deserve to create success and I'm willing to do what it takes. I know I am with the right company at the right time. I'm not alone. I will not quit. I'm a champion. And so it is. Whoop whoop. Can't you just feel the energy rise as the pep talk proceeds? The lesson here is that the fear, ding, 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 is self-imposed. I always, when I talk about fear, I always try to, um, I try to compare it to faith. Fear and faith are both, there are two things. Neither one of them are real and neither one of them have happened yet. Like they're not tangible. When I say they're not real, they're not tangible. Also, a fear is worrying about something that hasn't happened yet. Faith is being hopeful about something that also hasn't happened yet. And every day about every single situation, you have the choice of which way you lean. So being stuck is a choice, not, uh, not being stuck is also a choice. Our fears are really a reflection of our highly developed skills at making assumptions, at making things up. It's just your perception. You don't really know if people will, will respond by thinking you're pushy, and yet that assumption, which is an absolute figment of your imagination, is keeping you stuck. So I say stop it. Mastering your mind is not an easy task, my friend, but it is definitely worth worthy of the effort. As Mark Twain reminds us, 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones that you did. So throw, uh, throw off the bowlines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, and discover. So this... I'm not going to read any more to you, but I want you to see how much content is in this. And if any of this inspired you in the beginning, you'll be able to either, whether if you're a person that likes to print it off, you can print it off or you can just go and maybe print off the last here. What the, I'm going to show you what this looks like where you check mark the things that you feel. And then it gives you an actual worksheet where you can fill in your little pep talk to yourself. Now, hang on a second. Let me stop my share. Did you guys like that? First of all, the fears and plugging it into your best top pep talk ever. I thought uh, if I had known this, I probably would have moved a lot faster. I mean, like it seems like it's common sense, but for some reason she puts it in a way that's very rational. And I really like somebody talking to me like in a rational way. So the second thing I wanted to go over tonight, and I'm going to cover this just briefly. I, I hope to find, and maybe one of you who've been to a Leslie Zan training with me will already have this handy in a file form. But I want to cover briefly what a three-way call consists of because I thought they were the dumbest thing ever, ever. And I thought I will never like ever before I went to a Leslie Zan training. Um, I went to a Leslie Zan training. I think my first one was a year ago. Yes, it was. And in the room, uh, this, this Leslie, Leslie Zan was sponsored by several jewels in the company. We, uh, they got together, paid, paid to bring her in and we paid to come to this conference and it was totally worth the $42 or whatever it was. And when she got to the portion, um, she got to the portion where she was talking about three-way calls. The ones who had actually brought her in, um, Aaron, can you send that to me? Like, so I can read it. I don't know if that's going to, I don't know if we're going to be able to make that happen right this Senate, but yeah, like right now, what's, what's holding you up? <laughs> so, uh, if you can't right now, that's okay. <laughs> It, I was just going to actually like go through the one, like the way I go through. And, um, if not, then if you can't find it, but anyway, so when they brought her in, they had gone over with her because she's not a plexus person. She's a direct sales person in general. And she actually learned so much about plexus in order to do this training for us. 
she was amazed by our comp plan. She was like, I've never seen a comp plan like this. And she's been involved in direct sales for like 30 something years or something like that. But the long and short of it is she knew that Jetty and I were there and we had eaten dinner with her the night before. So she's assuming that we're both diamonds that surely we know how to do a blooming three way call. And I'm all like, when she starts talking about it, I'm thinking, Oh no, some of my level ones are in here and they flip a no that I don't do them. And I mean, I've never offered, they've never asked. It's never been a topic. I, I'm assuming that the whole world thinks they're as dumb as I think they are. So she starts talking about them and she would all through the whole talk, everything she had said to us, she would reference, am I right? And she would look at me because Jenny and I are both diamonds and we're there and everything. I'd be like, Oh yeah, you're right. Everything that she had said, uh, every now and then she would come over and she would like even touch my knee and say, am I right? And then she put the microphone in my mouth so that I could validate what she was saying. And then she comes over and she comes over with this, like, isn't it true about three way calls? And I was like, <clears throat> like, I couldn't even like, even though I actually wanted to lie, I wanted to go, they're amazing. They are so good. I love three way calls, but I knew, I knew I had team members in there who were not going to let me get away with it. They're like, you never did a three way call for me. So I just said, I, I whispered to her. I said, I don't do them. She's like, you don't do them. And I was like, no. And she goes, just sometimes I was like, ever. I've never done one. So then she literally squatted down and had to consult with me. Why have you not? Is there a reason we go through this whole thing? And I was like, this is going to sound awful, but I think they're pushy and they're awful. They're pressuring. And she's like, okay, we need to clean this slate. So she gave us a script and I'm going to, did you hang on? I'm going to see what Aaron has said. Okay. Okay. I will find it. Some jewel will have it so that you can actually have it to print out. I looked on the jewel page before that, before I got on here and I didn't see it, but I can ask around and find it, but it's very different than how I had assumed in my mind. I thought that it went like, hang on just a minute. Let me get my pressuring up line on the phone and they will have you signed by the time you hang up. That's all I had been on the victim side of three-way calls that felt like that. And I didn't want anything to do with that. So actually, and now I've got a few of you that are doing this with me. You're like, yeah, it works good. Now that you've got in the water, you know, the water is warm, but anyway, so how it basically works, it's just like you're having a conversation. This is one uh, scenario. You're just having a conversation with your prospect and you've hopefully prayerfully told me, that there's a possibility that this might happen. Okay. So you're just talking, 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 and you're telling them the best that you can. And they happen to mention something about their fear of talking to people, or they mention something about the fact that they've been um, really gr grief ridden since uh, their cousin died. And you go, okay, this is my shot. You say, you know what? I have an idea. Write that down. You know what? I have an idea. Okay. You know what? I have an idea. Hang on a second. You put them on hold. You dial me in. Not all of you to me. I don't have time, but some of you that know you can, you dial your upline in, you dial your upline in. You're all like, okay, you get, get the upline on the phone and you say, okay, I'm talking to Mary Ann. She's telling me about whatever. Some phones work where you can actually give them a consult, a, a five second consult. Some of them don't. Some patch you straight in, depending on, I don't know, I've, I've had some where you go straight in. And so the minute your upline answers the phone and they say, hello, you say, and this is another thing you need to write down. Hey, this is um, Jesse McCracken, first and last name. The reason this is utmost importance is so I don't go, hey, my sister, what's up? Or something like that. If, it, if you're like buddies with me and I might say something crazy, um, you need to give me the code word, which is first and last name. So this is, I'm just giving, I'm stepping you through it, but I'm going to go back. It goes, 
hey, I have an idea. Hang on just a second. Hold. Style. If you get a chance, you're going to say she was just telling me about her depression. Can you help? Yeah. Okay. Go back. You two, are you both on here? Yes, we're both on here. If there's no chance to dispatch, you just say, hey, uh, Lori, this is Jesse McCracken. I say, hey, Jesse, what's going on? Instead of the way I said it a minute ago. It says, I'm on the phone with my friend, Kim, and she was telling me about how she lost her sister. And it reminded me of that story, that of your story, and I thought you could share with her. And then you shut up. Ugh. And then you let your sponsor take it for however long, usually the shorter the better, as in like four, three or four minutes, something like that. And then the sponsor, their job is to say, after they kind of round it up, they say, is that, is that what you were wanting me to cover? Is that what you were wanting me to tell her about? Or something like that so that they can say, well, one other thing if they need to. And then you say, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and get, you call me back if you guys need anything else. Okay, okay. That way immediately the pressure is let off. All you did was validate. If it's one of those things, it's like, you know what? My friend was sharing with me that they didn't really know if they could ever have the opportunity to make life-changing money with something like this. You would say, this is so-and-so. Okay. Uh, hey, she was telling me about the fact that she said she was really wanting to make a go of this, like make life changing money. Is that something that you think uh, you could share with her about what you and your husband have done? And I would take over from there and you keep it short. And then you basically, you pull yourself out of the conversation at the end. It's been really good talking to you guys. If there's anything else I can do, you holler back at me. That way the friends can get back on the phone. The prospect and the ambassador can get back on the phone with, and you have pulled yourself from the equation and they can continue the conversation. Does that sound a lot less invasive than what it, what you might have thought of as a three way call? I mean, for me, it was another thing. Don't call them three ways, three way calls, three way calls. I've just heard it too many times. Okay. You don't want to invite any, anybody to a, anything but a three-way call, okay? Um, if I find that script, do you think you could use it? Once you get comfortable doing this with prospects, you will start wanting to do this with your team. And I'm develop as in like, as a new ambassador comes on your team, you'll want to get you want to get them hooked up with your upline so that they can actually go over with like what their why is, talk about their goals, um, any obstacles that they're facing, that type of thing, and get them set on a good path towards success. And those are simple. You can actually set those up. You can do them on the phone. You can do a three-way Zoom. Um, lots of teams are out there are doing these. They're intimate and they're not, they're not lengthy. They're short. And they're intimate as in the person will feel comfortable asking what they might consider to be dumb questions. If it's just uh, their sponsor, them, their sponsor, and the upline. Hang on. I'm going to glance at these questions really quick. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to send you the Leslie Zan thing. I'm going to put it on the butterfly page, the Leslie Zan thing that I just showed you. And you can share it with your teams if you'd like. I would suggest um, for someone who is more organized than myself, you may want to like copy all that script and stick it somewhere um, on like another document because this is like a website PDF, something or the other. You can probably download it, but in case you can't, I didn't look that far into it. I would hate for her to take that down one of these days and none of us have it because that's a really good plugging your fears into your, or plugging your fears into your best pep talk ever. So let's see here. And I will try to find the script for the three-way calls. Um, I'm going to actually open it up. We have a few minutes here. I was covering, I knew I had a lot of um, content, so I dove right into it tonight. Um, if anybody has any questions though about, let's try to keep it at least here in the beginning, let's try to keep it 
about what we just talked about. If anybody has any questions, you'll have to unmute yourself. For real? I'm such a good teacher, nobody even has a question. All right. Actually, for real. That's what it is. Y'all know. Okay, oh, for real. Your question. Um, it's not really a question, but I guess it's a fear, and that's having a three-way call with um, some of my downline and me not knowing the answer to something. You know, I kind of feel like. Okay. Uh, I feel like you. What you inadequate, should, I guess. <laughs> okay. Program. To let your let your downline know that you would like to do three way calls for them, but you would like for to keep it with they know what they know would be within your realm of knowledge. Um, if they have a tricky trick trickerston that is on the phone. That, those instances, like if their prospect is someone who's just trying to trip them up, asking them questions, and they think, God, I'm going to defer this to Pam. What they should really do is say, you know what, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, let me get the answer for you, and then I will send it to you, rather than put you on the phone and make you feel like you're inadequate. Because I would feel the same way if somebody's like, can you tell me where the lactobacillus is sourced from and why it comes from you know, where it's like, oh my gosh. Usually those people are not really wanting it, the answer to that question anyway. They either want to be a smarty pants or they're wanting to get out of doing what the, per the person is trying to prospect them about. So okay. does that help? Yep. Okay, so basically I always look for key, I tell my people look for keywords in a three-way call situation. Wait if you if you can the ideal situation is wait for them to say something that you know i would speak well about like anything and and then after i've spoken well about that for three or four minutes if you also want to say hey something else i think she may be interested in is something else you know i know something about if that makes sense okay because i mean sometimes the compensation plan and um you know ingredients and that kind of stuff can get trickier than what we want to get into on a three-way call but um okay is that good pam okay that's the kind of questions i'm looking for if you have questions that are that fear is keeping you from do through doing three-way calls now that i've started doing them i realize how good they are it's a smart thing to do oh p.s i have to tell you something really quick if you think of a question interrupt me in a second after I'm finished, which is not interrupting me. Okay, about a year ago, no, about a year and a half ago, a lady joined my team, and uh, she had been a network marketing marketer for 25 years or something, and assumed, assumed, just like Leslie Zan, that I did three-way calls. The way I learned to do three-way calls is that she put me on three-way calls constantly and I didn't even know that that's what she was doing like she would just call and say hey Lori this is so and so and I'd be like hey and she's like patches me in and I would think good grief and I would think well I'm not gonna pressure these people I hope that's not what she's wanting out of me so I would just tell them my story and then I would bow out of the conversation and then like the very next day she'd have another one and she'd like hey um hey Lori this is so and so I have my friend so-and-so. Um, I was wanting you to tell your story about what blah, blah, blah. And I'd be like, I'd tell the story. Well, it, they were very effective, even though I wasn't pushing, which is the, the deal. You're not supposed to push. But I thought, if she's just because she's a network marketer for 20-something years, she thinks I'm going to get on phone and push people. I was doing exactly what I was supposed to be doing, and I didn't know it. And then I thought, later I thought, no wonder she keeps doing this to me because it was working quite well. And then I was like, after... After the fact, I was like, oh, this is when Leslie's answer telling how to do it. I thought, oh, it works if you're not pushy with people. So, okay, hang on a second. I've got another question. I see it. Okay, what would you say if your upline didn't answer? Okay, the best situation, 
Because this happens. Happens a lot. Shut up, Missy Rogers. <laughs> I didn't, I've been not answered a few times, but the best situation is to let your upline know ahead of time and try to keep it like within that time frame. But it doesn't always happen that way. So if they don't answer, it's just a situation where honestly, you just have to think to yourself, probably wasn't what intended to be. And then you move on and then you tell them, hey, if it's something you really do want, um, if you really do want your upline to tell them something, you say, hey, I have this idea. You try to get them to answer. If they don't answer, you come back and you say, Oh, you know what? I was wanting my, I was wanting my friend Lori. Don't call, that's another thing. Don't call them upline, downline. People don't like that kind of language unless they're caught up in it, you know? So you just, my friend Lori, I was wanting my friend Lori to tell you a story that you made me think of, but you know what? We'll have to call her back either tomorrow or later this evening or something and then just move on past it because it doesn't always work. Hang on a second. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> that's right Amy <laughs> Amy Amy I have to ask you a question did you even know that we were doing a three-way call did you know beforehand she did okay yeah because it doesn't hurt to tell someone you can tell someone if that doesn't make you nervous like if you know them well enough and you want to tell them look I want to call my friend Laura and tell uh, have her tell you something that's fine um if if you don't want to though, and you just think I'm just going to do it on the slide, the, Hey, I've got an idea works great. She said, she told me and it really didn't make me feel better. <laughs> about. <laughs> hey, okay. Amy, I'm wondering, let me ask you this because you didn't, you were afraid of what I was going to do on the call. Is that what you were worried about? Here, we're going to wait on her. We'll, we'll let her answer. Does anybody else have a question? Yeah, Lori. Yes. This is a little, what is, I'm just new to this. What is a downline and an upline? Okay. Good question. Your, your down, well, these are just terms that we use to describe. It's not, it's not that big of a deal, but what, the term you use to describe your, team people you have sponsored and other people that they have brought into the company would be your downline your upline would be the person who sponsored you and above them does that make sense yeah that's kind of what i thought you were saying okay yeah there you know there are charts and stuff that if you if you want to go look up upline and downline it'll kind of help you better understand um the, the terminology of it but basically like all of you are part of my team but I'm also on a team that's above me. So I kind of consider everything my team, you know, my team's above me, my team's around me and below me, whatever. And we're all kind of a big team. But when you're specifically referring to people who are in this business, by, specifically because they were sponsored into your team, that's your downline. Okay. Where do you find this list at? Of who, who, who your upline is? Well, no, of uh, the, uh, terminology okay well if you just google like um, MLM downline or MLM multi-level marketing so I'm talking about MLM upline and then click on if you go to a Google search and click on images it will probably show you like a chart that shows you like it's usually like uses stick figures or even little circles that'll be like you your three that you sponsored the three that each of them sponsored and it starts looking like this does that make sense? Yeah, that does. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Other questions? It's also in the back office. Uh, you can look at the chart, uh, and you can also see who your upline is and your downline. Yes. Anybody else? Anybody? Anybody? Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put that all that stuff on the butterfly page. Make sure and go over there and download it to your own computer. And um, I'm assuming there are no more questions. You guys are awfully quiet, like church mice. Church mice is that a word? Church mice tonight. So okay, 
Well, I'm going to peace out of here. I'm going to um, pray over us. And um, if you guys want to hang around and chat for a little bit after we pray, we can. But I'm going to let everybody go that needs to go because I know we're in a we're in a time zone weirdness with us doing these calls as late as we do. So um, I want to know, first of all, though, where Laura is because you have sunglasses on. <laughs> I am actually in my RV, and it's not sunglasses. It just looks like sunglasses. <laughs> they are pinhole glasses, and they actually help your eyes get better. <laughs> okay. I was like, she's on the other side of the world or something. That's awesome. <laughs> I was going to ask you to tell us, what are you doing? That's awesome. Okay. Okay, you guys. All right, let's pray. Lord, we just come to you tonight so excited about all the things that are coming up over the next several months. We have so much. Oh, my gosh. Just thinking about this year and everything that it stands for, for our country, for just our lives and our families. And the thing is, I just have to remind myself every day that it's not a mystery to you. You already know you've known since the beginning of time. And I just ask that you just keep us patient and peaceful in regards to what might seem like a catastrophic mess. <laughs> uh, I'm just grateful to have peace in situations like that. Peace that some people may not, may not have. And Lord, those people that don't have that peace, I just ask that you bring them to us so that we can show them the way. I'm so grateful for this Plexus platform that you've given to so many of us to reach out and help people. I was uh, sharing earlier today that, that, that it was, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I do this when I pray, I go back and forth. I'm gonna tell you guys something really quick, but I was sharing that it was four years ago, exactly this month that Jetty joined this venture with me and during that summer it was so hot and it was an election year and it was like it looked like people were, he was selling cars and nobody was buying anything everybody was just stuck as far as big financial decisions houses weren't selling cars weren't selling and it just seemed like I don't know. It's just something I'm super grateful that, 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 uh, that something like Plexus came along in our lives at a time when we truly desperately needed it. And every time I think about not telling someone because of my own stupid fear, I think, get over yourself. This has completely transformed your life. This is not about you. This is about them. And then if they, you know, whatever, but I'm just so grateful. So grateful to be connected to teammates like you and, you know, involved in your lives in whatever way, little ways, big ways. Some of you in like magnificently huge ways and your people, some of you are just people I didn't even know before Plexus and that amazes me. I see so many lives that are just being transformed in ways you know, like health ways and then like self-improvement ways and in ways of the spirit. And those things just, they blow my mind. They actually are like miracles. Yep. Watching the way God works. Amen. Isn't it so strange? He would work through a network marketing company the way he does. And he's so intimately involved. If you ever get confused, he's so intimately involved in every single detail. I mean, I don't know how that we could anticipate that somebody would live in our heart and not be intimately involved in our emotions, in our interactions. And if you use the, if you use that, like it's to be used if we use that your heart like a magnet to draw people in 
It's what we're called to do. It will also flourish your business. It cannot help but do that. I just feel like I'm supposed to just pour it out like that for you guys tonight. Use your heart like the magnet it is. It has the most powerful spirit inside it. And we're to use it for his glory, for the kingdom. We're to use it for everything. We're to use it for its healing power. We're to use it to love people with, to have mercy over people. We're, oh, just so much, so much. I'm overwhelmed with it. The spirit inside us should keep us in check. Uh, it should also keep us in check with knowing what's relevant to the big picture and what's not relevant to the big picture. The little nitpicky stuff in our day, just lay it down and rock on. I'm sorry if this doesn't sound like a prayer to you guys, but it is. This is just laying it all out there. I'm so grateful for my kids, my husband, and I know all of you are as well. Grateful for your families, those ones that you can call on for anything. We're sharing with the leaders. At this training I was at, I was saying, is it not the most amazing feeling for your kids to be proud of you? I mean, just to recognize, my kids actually recognize that we've done something awesome and they also recognize because of the way that we are instilling this in them they realize that the reason that we've done something awesome is because of the spirit inside of us but it just feels so good and he deeply wants that for every one of you you may already completely have that in what you already do in your home you may already have it in your plexus business you may already have it teach in school, whatever it is that he deeply, deeply wants that connectedness in your family. I believe he deeply wants us to have more time with our families, quality time with our families. He wants us to have be quiet more and listen more for his voice. To worship him, praise him, listen. There's that awesome, there's this awesome skit. It's like, I think it's called the skit guys do. And they're talking about how to pray. And they each do their little praying thing. And one of them's acting like they're praying and the other one's God. And then they take turns back and forth. And each time after it's like one kind of like eccentric person praying and then a really quiet, timid person. It's all these different scenarios. But each time after they finish praying, whichever one of them's um, doing the prayer, they, you know, they're like, thanks God. And they walk off. And every single time, regardless of which one of them's playing the God part, God says, hang on a minute. I wanted to tell you something. And I just feel like that that's where he is. He just, so much like when we spend those moments of gratitude that's the time to be connected when we when we have those moments in our family when we feel grief or despair or whatever and we're lifting that up just being quiet afterwards get your journal out get your notebook out whatever it is maybe even your voice recorder and let him pour into you. He doesn't need us to do that. That's for our own benefit. And he just loves us. And I just pray blessings over all of your families. 
all over your teenagers for some reason it's like pray blessings over their teenagers we're raising teenagers so <laughs> and I'm just grateful for all of you I just lift all these little kind of scatterbrained thoughts up to the throne room of heaven any thoughts or emotions that you have you know questions that you have for God write them down on a piece of paper and just ask even if they're blatant I can I can remember um, I can remember asking on Facebook once if you could ask God any question what would you be and a lot of politically correct answers came in and my sister private messaged me and she said she didn't say what she was referring to and it was hours after I had posted that and she didn't say I would ask him this she just asked her question to me and she said where were you when the world stopped turning which is a line from a song that I'm sure many of you know it says where were you when the world stopped turning on that September day she wasn't referencing the World Trade Center though she was referencing the anniversary of my brother's death and God can take that kind of stuff I mean he's big enough to take that kind of stuff and you know what's really odd and strange is when he answers us the answer is usually so different than what we assume how we have it pegged in our mind So if you have something tonight and you're just like, you know, I don't understand this. Be bold enough just to ask. And I just lift this all up in Jesus name. Amen. Sorry. I didn't mean it to get weird. <laughs> it does sometimes though. <laughs> um, Hang on a minute. I got to read these. I've got a few private messages. I'm going to try to get this loaded tonight. For those of you who've asked that, two of you have asked it. Pam, have you already seen that? Okay, hang on. I'm going to look at that at the very next thing that was said. Can you see his face? Oh, there. <laughs> you Michael. It wasn't Michael that we scared that time. Yeah, it was Michael that we scared that time, wasn't it? <laughs> Y'all remember, remember that? <laughs> it wasn't at Christmas time, wasn't it? Michael, I told everybody, I, did, I was teaching that thing where you put your hand on your heart and you focus on your heart <laughs> and I said now think about something basically warm and fuzzy and the next thing you know he is out <laughs> even after I was finished praying I was able to talk about him for a while and say it was say let's all say Merry Christmas and scared the bejesus out of him so <laughs> <laughs> That's why he doesn't show his video anymore. Okay, y'all have totally made my night now. Okay. So, I'm going to stop recording in case...